Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the house of the Lord on this Advent Sunday, and what a wonderful time it is to come into God's presence and to hear his word and to understand that as we prepare ourselves for the annual celebration of the coming of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, we come together today preparing not only our homes and our families, but also our spirit that we might be in the presence of the living God and feel his presence during this Christmas season. Uh, You know, it's funny how God works. God works in mysterious ways. I woke up this morning and I thought to myself, well, my wife said to me, well, why don't you come on up to the Episcopal Church and and, and with me this morning and and let's have a, a time together. And she sings in the choir, and I usually sit off by myself somewhere in the church. And, uh, but that still small voice said to me, no, not this Sunday. And then I thought, well, I'll go to my own church. And uh, I drove by there, and I thought, no. Uh, I had some books to deliver there, and uh, I said, no, that's not where I belong. And I started driving around, up and around uh, Ionia, around that area, and then finally up, uh, up uh, 64 here. And I thought, I need to be there. And you know something, I came in and uh, uh, understood that the the pastor who was to preach today is ill. And so I remembered back when I was in seminary uh, many, many years ago, the uh, principal of our seminary said two things to me. He said, Tom, the first thing you need to always remember is you need to be ready to preach. The second thing you need to be ready for is to die. And, you know, I thought to myself this morning as I was sitting in the back there, you know, that's exactly what uh, our faith is all about, isn't it? And uh, I thought to myself, well, I hope I'm able to preach and not die. (laughs) Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, we come into your divine presence, asking your blessing to be upon us this day. We thank you, Lord, that during this Advent season, we can prepare ourselves for the annual celebration of the birth of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord, we know that we are unworthy, Lord, to even mention his name. But yet, Lord, as we come before you, we know, God in heaven, that you sent him for us, for our salvation, so that we might have forgiveness of sin and life eternal. I now pray, Lord, that you will send your Holy Spirit upon all of your children gathered in this place and upon this preacher, that these words this morning may not be the words of Tom Wicket, but may be the words of Almighty God coming from heaven through Christ into all of our hearts. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. The great Christmas story from the Gospel of Luke. It says a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be taxed. And everyone went to their hometown to be taxed and to be registered. And Mary and Joseph went down to Bethlehem. And while they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child. And she gave forth her her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger. And then there was in the same country shepherds abiding in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. And the angel of the Lord came upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone round about them, and they were filled with fear. And the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. And this shall be a sign unto you. You shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes and lying in a manger." And then there was with the angel the heavenly host coming forth from heaven singing, Glory to God in the highest and on earth, peace, goodwill toward men. And when the angels had departed from them, the shepherds said one unto the other, Let us go even unto Bethlehem and see this thing that has come to pass. And they came and they found the baby and Mary and Joseph and they fell down and worshipped him. And leaving there, they went out and told everything of the wonderful things that they had seen. What a great story that is, the story of the birth of the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, the Savior of the world. The birth of the greatest man who ever lived. The birth of not only a man, but the God-man, Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. Down through history, the coming of the Lord has been predicted. 
It was predicted even from the very first part of the Bible. It says, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth, and the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters, and God said, let there be light. And then later on it says, let us make man in our own image. Male and female, we will create them. I want you to notice something very, very carefully. They said, we made man, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. You see, in our theology, Jesus existed from the very moment of creation. He existed with his heavenly Father and the power of the Holy Spirit. And then down through the centuries, over and over and over again, we see, indeed, the prediction of the coming of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. In the book of the prophet Isaiah, it says, Unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. It says also, that he will heal, that he will heal the deaf so they might hear. He will touch the eyes of the blind that they might see. He will lift up those who are crippled. He will touch those with the diseases of the skin and they shall be healed. All down through history we see the preparation for the coming of Jesus Christ. You know, at this Christmas time, there's always other preparations, isn't there? And I always think to myself, uh, Lord, I was glad that I was born a man. And why? Because I do very little at Christmas. I buy one gift, that is for my wife. My wife buys the gifts for the children. She makes the food. She decorates most of the house. She does almost everything else. And I do very little. Now, you may say, boy, he's lazy. (laughs) But that's not the way it is. My wife likes everything to be in its proper place. She likes the decorating to be done properly. She likes the food to be cooked properly. She likes all the gifts to be properly wrapped. She is one of those persons who likes to prepare, to prepare for the coming of the Christmas season. In the Bible, there are three main characters that I love, I think, more than anyone else. And the first one, of course, is Jesus, our Lord and our Savior. For without his sacrifice upon the cross, without his coming to the earth, without his, indeed, immortal words spoken through the Gospels, we indeed would be dead in our sins. The second one that I love, I think, secondly, is Moses, the great deliverer of the children of Israel, who, with God's help, set them free from their Egyptian bondage, take them out into the wilderness and through the Red Sea and to Mount Sinai. And there he stood with God on that holy mountain and God said, take off your sandals for you stand on holy ground. And then the third is John the Baptist. Now John the Baptist is a very special person. He was, as we know, a cousin or a relative of Jesus. He was the son of Elizabeth and Zechariah. But he had a mission. He was given a mission by God to come before the Lord Jesus Christ and prepare the way for the coming of the King of Kings and of the Lord of Lords. And just as we prepare ourselves for Christmas, so God was preparing the world for the coming of his Son. Can you imagine down through those many, many centuries How God longed to have his children come back to him. How God longed to be able to hold them in his arms and that they would love him. That he longed to have them be obedient to him and keep his law. And God tried so many things, didn't he? He called Abraham from Ur of the Chaldees to Canaan. Through Abraham and Isaac and Jacob, he gave the children of Israel. He called out the prophets to to preach against the sins of the people. And even in those days of darkness, 
the prophets spoke of the coming of the Messiah, the coming of the Christ, the coming of that Lord of Lords and King of Kings, the Savior of the world. John the Baptist was a very special person because John the Baptist not only prepared the way for Jesus, but he knew his place. Because, in fact, in our reading today, when John was put into prison by Herod, Jesus asked and said, knowing that John the Baptist was in jail, Jesus spoke these words and he said this. John was asking what Christ was doing. And he said, the blind see, the lame walk, the deaf hear. And Jesus said these words, I always remember them. He said, no man was born of woman who was greater than John the Baptist. John the Baptist, I think, represents each and every one of us in a very intimate and special way. Because each and every one of us need to prepare ourselves for the coming of Christmas. Now, I'm not talking about decorating the house or buying the gifts or or preparing the food or, or doing all those things that are necessary. And you know, there's absolutely nothing wrong with that, with with putting together all the great things that we celebrate at Christmas as traditions. But we must not forget one thing, for John the Baptist said, I am not the Messiah. But the one who comes after me, I am not worthy to untie his sandals. For he is the Christ, he is the Messiah, he is the Savior of the world. But how do we prepare ourselves for the coming of Christmas? Right now we're in the third Sunday in the season of Advent and we've lit our Advent wreath. And the third Sunday means that we're getting closer and closer to that time when we will sing the great hymns, O come all ye faithful. We'll sing the great hymns of the faith that speak to us about the Christmas season. And we'll rejoice that Jesus has come. But we need to prepare our hearts for the coming of Jesus. Not only the coming, once again, of the annual celebration of his birth, but also the coming the second time of Jesus to establish his kingdom upon the earth. The word advent comes from the Latin adventus, which means to wait or to anticipate the coming. And that is the season that we're in right now. And we know that as we anticipate the coming of Jesus, that indeed Christ our Lord and our Savior is waiting for us to come to him spiritually spiritually in our minds, spiritually in our hearts, spiritually in our bodies, spiritually in our homes, spiritually in our churches, spiritually in our communities. And I need to ask this question, which I asked myself. Am I truly ready this year to welcome the Lord Jesus Christ back into my life again in a new and exciting and wonderful way. And I had to think about it for a while. And I thought, well, you know something, since I retired, you know, I, I, I'm not sure that I, I'm just as much into it as I used to be because, uh, you know, when you get up to preach, you've got to read and study and plan and prayer and, and all of those things every week to get ready. And now, of course, I still do those things, but not in such an intense way because I'm not standing uh, before someone to preach the gospel. But then I said to myself, no, I, I, think that, uh, I think that I'm ready. And how did I get myself ready? The first thing I did was I turned away from those things that separate me from Almighty God. Every day in the morning and every night before I go to sleep, I begin saying, Lord, forgive me of my sins, the ones that I have committed 
and the ones that I omitted. That is to say, the ones that I shouldn't have done and the ones that I should have done but didn't do. You see, it's important for each and every one of us to be in a right relationship with God. You know, uh, married men will tell you that uh, it's necessary to be in a right, right relationship with your wife. Because if mama's happy, everybody's happy. And if mama's not happy, everyone's unhappy. We all know that. And the, I see the gentlemen are kind of laughing and kind of uh, 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 not wanting to really let on. They're, they're laughing about it. But it's true, isn't it? And what about it when we separate ourselves from God through sin, no matter what kind of sin that may be, we make God unhappy because we have taken the word of God and we've just put it aside for a little while and said, well, I want to indulge in this sin. I want to go ahead and do this. I know I'm not supposed to do it, but I know that God will forgive me afterwards. And you see, that's wrong. We always need to be aware of our conduct. We always need to be aware of what's taking place in our minds, in our hearts, and in our actions. We know that Jesus came as a little baby born 2,000 years ago in a stable in the little town of Bethlehem. But we know that he grew up to be a man. He grew up to be the greatest man who ever lived. He grew up to be the master, the savior, the Messiah, the wonderful counselor, the mighty God, the everlasting father, the prince of peace. And he went to the cross and he hung upon that cross 2,000 years ago. And as they were killing him, as they were mocking him, he cried out, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. And sometimes we don't know what we do, but most of the time we do. And because of that sacrifice on the cross, because of his glorious resurrection, we have forgiveness of sin and life eternal. Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. Ye who believe in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And whosoever lives and believes in me shall never die, but have eternal life. He also said, let not your heart be troubled, believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions, I go to prepare a place for you. And when I go to prepare a place for you, I will come again and take you to myself, that where I am, you may be also. You see, we have forgiveness of sin, and because of that, we have life eternal. And you know something? We don't have to wait until we die to have life eternal. For when we give our lives to Jesus Christ as our personal Lord and Savior and endeavor to live the life that God has called us to live, we have eternal life from the moment we open our hearts to Christ and allow him to come in and to be our Savior and our Master. So the first thing we need to do is we need to deliver ourselves from sin, keep our minds clear, keep our bodies clean, keep our souls in keeping with God. The second thing we need to do is we need to be in prayer. One thing my wife and I have done from the very first moments of our marriage is that we decided that before we went to bed at night, we would kneel beside our bed and we would read a devotion, we would read a portion from the scriptures, and we would pray together. Now sometimes, sometimes I, I get my wife mad. You know, I'm not the perfect person. And so sometimes when we knelt to pray, there was a little bit of tension sometimes. But you know something? When you open your mouth and start to pray, when you open yourself the Holy Spirit sends the glorious peace and joy and love and hope and faith from heaven into your heart. And it all slips away. I wonder what would happen if uh, you had someone that you were in love with and you never told them that you loved them. 
What kind of relationship would that be? And isn't the same thing when we pray to God? Aren't we saying to God, Lord, I love you. Lord, I want to pray to you. I want to hear your voice in my life. I want you to be present within me. Communication is so vitally important in a human relationship, but it's also vitally important in our relationship with God. For without prayer, we cannot prepare ourselves for the coming of the Christmas season. Now, I'm not talking about a grocery list. Lord, I need this, I need this, I need that, I need that. Oh, please help so-and-so. And And all of that's important, yes. But the one thing that's more important than that is that we are establishing with God through his son, Jesus Christ, a relationship that comes together and holds on tight as we talk to him, tell him about our love for him, and ask for his blessings upon our lives. And you know something? It's fantastic. It's fantastic what God would answer prayer about. You know, as I said, when I got up this morning, I wasn't sure where I was going to church. But I prayed. I said, Lord, tell me where to go. And having learned obedience over the years, I came here not knowing what was happening. And you see, prayer is something that you cannot do without. So if you want to prepare yourself for Christmas, you need to prepare yourself by being in contact with God through prayer. Asking God to bless your Christmas, asking God to walk with you, to be with you, to help you, to... to, to come into a sense, into a relationship with his son Jesus that maybe you've never had before. And then the third thing we need to prepare ourselves for Christmas is to keep in his holy word. I don't know about you, how many of you are are good readers? How many of you like to read? Don't be afraid to slip up your hands. If you're not, don't put it up. How many did you say? Put them up again? Okay, Okay. thank you. Well, I am not a good reader. I have to admit that. Now, I have an excuse that I use over and over again, but I think it's just because I don't enjoy reading. Uh, I won't tell you about that excuse, but uh, one of the things that is a discipline as a Christian is the reading of his holy word. From the beginning of my ministry, 40 years ago, I promised myself that I would read the Bible every day. And I start at Genesis, and I go right through to Revelation. And then I get another version, and I start at Genesis, and I go through to Revelation. And I just keep reading, and I even read through all those uh, parts of Leviticus where it's talking about sacrifices, and the book of Numbers where it's talking about uh, all the Hebrew names, uh, some of which I can't pronounce very well. And uh, I know Pastor David, he could pronounce all those things, I've heard him do it, but uh, I couldn't. But why? Because there's something about this book. There's something about this book that is illuminating because it's written by many people down across the centuries but the word of God is here it's like it comes off the page into your heart it's like it it lights a light in your heart it's like a a light to your soul your mind is filled with the things of God and not the things of the world And as we read continually these words from the Holy Word of God, we indeed are filled with the love of Jesus Christ. 
I guess one of my favorite passages of Scripture is the one that everybody knows. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. And that's John, what? 3.16. But listen to the next one. We often forget this. It says, but God Christ sent Christ into the world not to condemn the world, but through him the world might be saved. You know what it's like to be saved? Many, many years ago, I remember a, uh, uh, a time when uh, we went swimming, my sister and my brother and myself. And back then, the ladies used to wear bathing caps. How many are old enough to remember bathing caps? Well, if you, oh, you're an honest congregation, aren't you? And we were in the pool there, and I was never a good swimmer, but uh, my brother and sister were, and uh, she was swimming along. All of a sudden, she started to go down. And she came back up, and she went down again. And my brother realized what happened, and he grabbed her by the top of the bathing cap and pulled her up out of the, out of the pool. Now, I think she would have drowned. And isn't that what Christmas is all about? Isn't it when Jesus reaches down from heaven and lifts us up from the mire and the muck and, and the terrible things that are going on in the world today and says, come to me, let me hug you, let me hold you in my arms, let me, let me care for you, let me forgive you, let me love you, let me, let me provide for you, let me heal you, let me come and be part of your life. That's what Christmas is all about. The beginning of the ministry of the greatest man. I've said it over and over again. The greatest man who ever lived. He was man, but yet he was God in human form. And no one has ever done what Jesus has done. No other religion on the face of the earth can say that they had someone who reached and made the blind to see. And the great words in the, in the wonderful and glorious Sermon on the Mount. The Mahatma, Mahatma Gandhi, the leader of the uh, freedom of the Indian people on the Indian subcontinent. He was a Hindu, but every day of his life he read the whole of the Sermon on the Mount because the words are so fantastic. So today... I challenge each and every one of you, prepare yourselves for the coming of Christmas. Prepare yourselves and everything that comes into your life, but be sure to prepare your heart, your mind, your soul. Because as important as our families and homes and friends and jobs and even churches are, it's that personal relationship with Christ that brings us salvation. So prepare yourself through prayer. Prepare yourself through the reading of scripture. Prepare yourself by, by throwing off those sins that separate you from God. And lastly, and lastly, if you haven't accepted Christ into your heart, Now's the time to do it. You know, some people go to church all their lives and never really find Jesus. And that's sad in a way. But when Jesus comes into your heart, it changes you completely from who you were to who you can be and who you will be when Christ comes in. I'm looking forward to Christmas. I'm looking forward to eating the food and opening the gifts and, and being with family and all those things. I'm looking forward to that. But what I want the most is to have the right hand of God holding mine and keeping me, forgiving me, loving me. And we all want that, don't we? I'm going to ask you to bow your heads now. And as we have this moment of, of quiet, 
contemplate in your own heart your relationship with Christ. Is it a relationship that you're proud of? Or is there something missing? Or something that's separating you from God? I don't know what that is in your heart, and God knows, though. Ask for forgiveness and draw close to Christ. And if there's anyone here who has not opened their hearts to Christ, or you wish to rededicate your life to Christ, just repeat this prayer after me. If It's totally voluntary. There's no big show. There's no coming to the altar, nothing like that. Repeat after me if you would. Our Heavenly Father, I ask your blessing to be upon me this day. Forgive my sins. Help me to walk in your way and to be a child after your own way. Today, O oh Lord, I ask the Lord Jesus to come into my heart or to re-coming re into my heart that to be my personal Lord and Savior that I might prepare myself to meeting the Master at Christmas and meeting him on that day where there is no beginning and no end. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your blessings on us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.